Okay, welcome back to the Casey Show. Pause. Okay, so the whole key here is I got back to California. I'm going to get some sailboats down there. I got some lined up. I got phone numbers of people all over the place from every tribe of the planet. One way or another, I got a little different color of an eye or size or shape. Boom. These people all know people who know people who know people, just like you people. And what I want to say now is that I want to go and help this world. I want to get animals out of cages. I want to find homes for animals at pounds. I want to get people who need homes that don't have them or are paying too much rent, buy more land and put up nether styles of housing developments. There's so many cool ways to live amongst groups of people in the 10s to 20s that aren't communes. They're just a different style of a village. It's the same thing as like a cul-de-sac. The same kind of concept, but just prettier, you know, more ponds, more water, more heat, you know, the things that you like to live, like places people go and pay money to just to be there for a day. Like why not make people's lifestyle something more like that? And so I aim to make places where it's a, it's a work situation where people come in and they help gardening, they help build new housing, and they get housing for it where there's no money exchange at all. And all, me and the other master artists will go get the cotton and the gold. We'll go get, we'll go do it. And if you want to help and learn to do things that are make money and make money, it's yours, and you can spend it in or out of of the community. I mean, it's that's what America is. You know what I mean? It's a village amongst a state amongst a a country, and that's how we roll. But there's so many ways to roll. So I am looking for people to. Give me a jingle or a ring. I'm on Facebook, Casey Naylor, C-A-S-E-Y-N-A-Y-L-O-R. Check out a little bit of my pictures on there. You can see some of the folks I already know and a little bit of parts of some of the homes, I think, on there and some of the festivals we go to. I'm going to be sending you and streaming you the monastery that we have with the goats. We're going to be doing goat chariot racing, ladies and gentlemen, and don't tell anybody, <laughs> which is funny because I'm telling everybody right now. But either way, it's going to be huge. We're going to get it all the way to the top. There's going to be battles, boffer weapons, Kevlar, carbon fiber, freaking chromed out, freaking armor, freaking shining knights and crazy golem ghouls. And people will be knocking each other off left and right. Freaking the guy gets fling over. He flies over the front. The goats fly over him. The goats freaking trip. They get ran over. And I know you're thinking, oh my God, what about the animals and the human? And I'm saying Kevlar armor on everybody. I'm saying you could just drop a car on the person. Boom, great armor. You're not going to, you can shoot him. Boom, fucking flies over here. But we're not going to shoot anybody. We're not going to drop any cars on anyone. We are going to use foam swords. We are going to use freaking helmets and glowing sticks and sparkled filled, oil filled, water filled balloons. So you can't call them a water balloon. They're not an oil balloon. They're not a sparkle balloon. We got to call it like a Woyarkle balloon. Watch out for the Woyarkle balloons. We just did it right now. That's how we learn and create new things. We just start throwing shit together like, you know, all the other creative creators that like to create. That's what we do. You know, we're artists, you know. Welcome to being in thine eyes, baby. All right. So, where the chariot races are will also be a castle. We're also going to have obstacle courses to get in and out of the castle to see if you are worthy. Because a lot of places, for instance, the harder the level, the higher the place you're going, of course. Not necessarily up, but, you know, it could be anywhere. This is going to be a theme park that will be a legal theme park. And there will be... Um, Fun for all ages. I'm talking all ages, too. Like, you could be a deep 30-year-old peer of mine, and I could blow your mind. I'm going to have tubes with LED screens all the way around with rabbit holes and freaking rabbits pointing at them like, you want to go that way? I freaking dare you. You know, maybe he'll say that, too. Maybe we'll have some animatronic thing that Disney can help us out with, you know? So far, we have no uh, connection with Disney and are not affiliated, except for the fact that we love Disney and watch lots of Disney. Um, so, but at the same time, they may want to help. You know, they're not obviously committed yet, but we'll talk to them. We'll see what they want to do. We're going to come over, pay some money, and ride the little trolley thing around and go look at the saltwater sharks swimming above ground, which is magical. They're like, we got dinosaurs in a pond with see-through stuff around it. It's like transparent aluminum. Fucking A. Um, I'm going to go up to Everybody's Brewing. Everybody's Brewing is in White Salmon, Washington. It has homemade beer, absolutely delicious. The owner's here most of the time. He's a really good guy. I'm not going to tell you his name, though. You know, I don't know if he'd want me to, and I kind of think if you're here and you're doing it, you can ask. And they'll be like, he's right over there. You know, and you can hang out, talk with him about deep stuff. Maybe not. Maybe he'll just be like, I don't want to talk to you because humans have that right of their own personal space. 
which is this is all like obvious shit. I'm telling you that I don't need to. It's just funny. People are like, why do you have to do all this extra information? And I'm like, well, sometimes I sum it up quick and sometimes we'll talk about the same concept for 12 hours. I mean, it's practice. It's practice on how to communicate, who to communicate to. It's like when you communicate to one person and maybe you've overdone him too much, you know, what you learned, right? And he learned. And then you went over to like a group of 12 people and you talked to them real similar and had the same similar conversations, not, not to script, but not verbatim, but you had, you know, you busted out a new one. And then at the same time, you're starting to evolve them. And as you get, you do it 37 more times, you know, it's like you've been around that dad or uncle, you've known your whole life. He always says all like 47 of the same stories, but every time they're really good. Like, cause he put his heart into each one and each time he got better at it. Like that's practice makes, you know, what is close enough to perfect is close enough. And if it is perfect, fucking you're amazing. And, you know, and I do believe it's out there. I'm a glass blower, so to me, perfection is, you know, just turning at the right speed. It's not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. This is earth science. So I'm going to make you just kind of, not make you, you know, peruse around the room with your eyeballs while I grab myself a smoky treat. And what I'm going to do is give you maybe a little art piece in the corner here to show you, like skadoosh. This is one of the things we do. And I say we because, you know, this is the umbrella of the Naylor Art Corporation between my mom and all our other collaborators, um, which I'll give you their names and their individual art focus. You know, this is one of my quickities. I pulled this thing out in Eugene, Oregon. I was going to Lane Community College, established in 1969. And my mind was doing well at the time, which still is. I'm getting better, actually. I'm taking the experience and becoming wiser. That's what's human. It's fucking awesome. Um, anywho, my mom really liked these designs and styles I did. It kind of just whipped them off the top of my head and then blending them the way the colors rolled. It reminds me of like an eye and then like a ninja turtle. You know, like if you had freaking eyeballs and boom, mouth. It could be, you know, if you're a goddess lady, of course, you know what they would say. <laughs> um, it could be a fish. It could be a meteor. It's the beauty in abstract is that if you put out time into abstract, no matter what, I mean, no matter what you do, actually, if you paint, draw, throw something around, throw sand at the ground, you can find something cool in it. Ladies and gentlemen, move stuff around. Play with your food. Play with your food. I love that lesson because I think that one's such a curse. Don't play with your food, son. It's like the kid's like, what? I'm doing astral projection, freaking divination skills like Professor Tre Trelawney from Harry Potter, Dad. And, 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 and. Am I not allowed to know what might be coming? Like, you know, time doesn't really exist, Dad, in spaghetti. There's no there's no watch on the spaghetti. Dad's like, of course. There's no what? What the hell are you talking about, son? It's so imaginative and weird. You've been watching Peter Pan too much, haven't you? Well, I will tell you one thing about Peter Pan, Dad. I will do hamster style anytime I want. See the hamster style that my friend that I just noticed? I didn't plan on it. This is Tinkerbell. Welcome to Tinkerbell. Welcome to the land of imagination. In imagination comes creation, comes the possibility of something real. If people dream about fairies long enough, hope for fairies long enough, the next thing you know, we might have flying moss that slowly evolve into a fairy or whatever word, you know, evolve to people's like anti-God. But, but no, not anti-God. So... Whatever word you like that refers to getting better, learning, maybe that's the one, learning. It's the muggle word for evolution. <laughs> mm. Oh, muggles. The sweet, non-magic using folk, right? Well, I mean, you can't exist and not be a ma magic user, you know, but a lot of people, like, instead of calling an altarpiece an altarpiece, you know, it's a... Uh, Obviously, it's a push pin, but my as an icon, I'm trying to just explain that they'll call an, an altar piece a knickknack. They'll call uh, so many things like that. It's like knickers to underwear in English, you know, like uh, magic. They'll call life. Like, that's life. Life did that. When we say magic because it's fun. It's kind of a controversial word. Because, you know, they burnt people at the stake and threw people from walls because they were scared that they were evil. Like, ooh, we're going to get you. Ooh, boo. But they were wrong. They were burning angels at the stake, which we're not, you know, we might be pissed off about, but we're not going to 
we don't go to revenge. Revenge is the dark side. We go to the light side every time. That's our devotion. That's our path. That's our destiny. That's our purpose, ladies and gentlemen. And the way I look at you is like, how dare you? Because it is how dare you. How dare you think that we would want to hurt you? Any one of the angels. How dare you? Why dare? Don't dare. You know, except for that drug thing. Kids shouldn't do drugs. I agree. You know, don't do drugs. Hmm. It grows from the earth. It still can fucking kill you. <laughs> Amen. And blessed be. Aho. Takiyaso to all of our relations. <laughs>